What's up, freaks? This is Steve Says, episode number 91. This is all about break down to breakthrough. That is the title of this episode. And we're going to go over the lessons learned during the suffering in the 24 hour push up challenge that we just finished just here a couple days ago. I take a quick swig of my whiskey. Mag pouches on the water bottle. Very, very important. So here we are. I'll try to if you have questions, comments. I've got you on several screens here. So just put any questions, comments down below. If you want to talk about it, you want to jump in on the conversation, let's do it. Let's talk about it. So here we go. Steve says, this is not always necessarily what you want to hear on this show, but it's what you need to hear. Because some people will hate, but most can relate. We are bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. Steve says there's a live show on how to have a no excuses, badass mindset, guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles that are preventing your success in your health, your family, your finances, so you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own freaking terms. This week, again, we're talking about break down to breakthrough lessons learned and in the suffering during the 24-hour push-up challenge for charity that we just completed this weekend. And I'm, I want to ask you a few questions to start off. I always like to ask you a few tough questions. As I think the microphone is not set up. There we go. Now we're good. So let's, let's, I'm not sure if you, the mic was up, I think it was just disconnected there, but here we go. We are talking about today, breakdown to breakthrough and uh, a few hard questions to ask you before we get started. Like how often do you intentionally put yourself through suffering and how often do you suffer in silence? Because if you've seen the theme, the last few weeks has been all about suffering. And some, there's a good suffering, then there's a bad suffering. There's an, an intentional suffering. There's a suffering that the universe sends to you that you need to go through to break you down so you can have those breakthroughs. But then there's also another kind of suffering where you're just suffering in silence. And then I want to ask you, do you know how, how to enter the, the magic threshold towards excellence and invincibility? And we are going to go through all that today on Steve Says episode Number 91, as we focus on the mind, the body, and the business, on how you can have a role model mindset, how to operate with discipline, energy, confidence, being an action taker, and more importantly, being your freak self. Operating to dominate is what it's all about. So let's talk about it. We're going to be talking today about pain and suffering, sacrifice, hardship, challenge, and the lessons learned during this, this crazy 24-hour push-up challenge we did. Literally awake for 24 hours, seeing how many reps you can get, what mistakes were made, what lessons were learned, what breakthroughs did we have after the breakdowns. And let me tell you, there were breakdowns and there were breakthroughs. So first, let's start with suffering. What is suffering? What is suffering? Suffering is adversity. Suffering is hardship. Suffering could be called discomfort. It could be called difficulty. Suffering is distress. But one thing that you don't hear as a definition of suffering is anything about failure or anything about being everlasting or anything about even really being bad or being something you need to avoid. Suffering is to undergo, uh, sustain disadvantages or loss. That's it. Sustain disadvantages or loss. It could also be to, to have to endure something. Enduring pain or stress, maybe injury, loss, or anything unpleasant. But that's not a definitive thing. Suffering is not definitive. It's not the end. It's not a final thing. It's a phase. It's a, a, a feeling, almost just an emotion. And it's to endure. And suffering also can mean to endure pain and disability or death or, or and also being enduring it patiently and willingly can be suffering so it's not some end of the line end of the road last freaking thing that there is on the earth 
It's actually part of that magical threshold that we're talking about to get from the breakdown to the breakthrough. And that's what this is all about. That's what this 24 hour push up challenge is all about. And, and it, it was a fundraiser for the big brothers, big sisters. We raised over $4,000. There's still some, some collections that need to be made on sponsorships that were made per amount of push up. And let me tell you the goal, well, my own personal goal was 10,000 push ups. And I'll tell you what, I didn't even hit 5,000. The entire family together didn't even hit 10,000. But we'll get into that in, in a second. It's all about breakdown to breakthrough, the lessons that were learned during this challenge. And let me tell you something. You need, in order to have true, real breakthroughs in life, there has to be some form of breakdown, whether it's your ego, whether it's your thought process, your perspective, your stubbornness, your bullshittedness. There, there must be. Be, you must be broken down in order to be built back up. And, and in times of suffering and hardship and adversity is when you discover who the fuck you really are. That's when you discover it. It's the tipping point. Suffering, Instagram keeps pausing over there. Suffering is that, is that tipping point of, of being broken down to the, to the edge of what is endurable. And on that edge of what's endurable, you truly find out what the fuck you're made of. To find out who you really are and what the hell you're made of. And so that tipping point of endure of what's durable. And let me tell you something. Everything that's happened to you in your life to this point. If you're standing here, you're listening to this. If you're fucking breathing this air. If you're still on this rock spinning around in circles. Guess what? Everything that has happened to you in your life. No matter how bad or fucked up it is. Guess what? It was endurable because you're still here. If it wasn't endurable, you'd be fucking gone. You'd be dust. You'd be mist. You'd be pink fucking mist. But it's, it's happened to you and you're still here. It was endurable. Like, so think about that. Think about how much you can actually take. How much you can actually handle. Physically, mentally, emotionally. If you're still fucking here. It was obviously durable. And that's what suffering is. It's that tipping point. That breaking point. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't durable, you'd be fucking gone. You'd be gone. Because let me tell you, no great level of success or victory or financial gain was ever accomplished without a significant level of pain and suffering and fucking sacrifice. That's just the way it is. Those are prerequisites for the next level. Prerequisites really to, to reach any goal worth reaching. You can't expect something for nothing. You must go the motherfucking extra mile. And let me tell you something about the extra mile. The extra mile is a lonely freaking place. Because that gap in between where you are and that extra mile, that the, the gap to get there is a lonely place. Because those people that are not willing to do what you're willing to do are going to talk shit about you. They're going to hate on you. They're going to try and drag you down. They're going to question you. They're going to doubt you. And it's going to cause you to start doubting yourself, questioning yourself, procrastinating. You need to be willing to go where others are willing not to go. That's what you need to be doing. Be willing to do what others are not willing to do. And expect nothing for it in return. Don't expect something for nothing. You need to overcome the objections and the negotiations going on in, on in your head with your inner bitch. That's what you need to do. Overcome the objections. That inner bitch is trying to sell you on some shit. And you need to overcome those fucking objections. Right back here. That's what we do in the project. Men's personal development program. That's what we do. The project will break you down physically. So we can build you back up mentally, emotionally, socially, spiritually, and even fucking financially. That's what we'll do with the project. Break down from bitch to break through of beast is what's going to happen in the project. It's this, this is what we're talking about here. It's, it's a magical threshold. It's a magic portal from where you are to where you need to be, to where you want to be, to where your fucking family de deserves for you to be. That's what you need to be thinking about. That's what suffering is. Suffering is that magic portal. That magic threshold. It's that line in the fucking sand. That's what suffering is. What side are you going to choose? And once you get to a certain level of suffering, and this happened on the push-up challenge, you, it was the first five, six hours of cruising. Let me, let, let me break it down to like this. I got 600 push-ups 
in the first one hour. The last 12 hours, I only got 800 push-ups. So the middle push, middle ground there, got another whatever, a couple thousand, but just think about that. One hour, I got 600, and another block, the last 12 hours, only got 800. Because there, come, there came that point, that, that, that tipping point of suffering. Which side are you going to choose? And I didn't go to sleep. I was up alone. Alone in the middle of the night. And I, I was telling myself, you know, I didn't tell my, it was in my head, like, you know what, I could, I could take a quick 30 minute nap, no one would know, but fuck that. I walked around the house, I went to the jacuzzi to try and make those elbows start fucking moving again, because they just were locked up, I was doing sets of one and two push up like every five minutes. But I made the decision that I'm going to break through this magical threshold. Do you know what was going on during this time? During this fucking May, I'm alone, lonely, in that fucking extra mile, all by myself. Everyone's passed out, all the other freaks passed out. I intentionally had a tablet open, a computer open, a notebook open with a fucking pen scattered all over the place because I'm wandering around, walking around whenever I could feel my fucking arms again doing another push-up, just chipping away. And you know what? I'm, I might not get 600 like I did in the first hour, but I'll get one this hour if I have to. I'll get one. Or at least I'll try to get one. I'll fucking go until my elbows break through the skin and explode out of my fucking body. That's what I'm going to do. That's, the, that's what the direction I chose. It was my decision. It was became a moment. And, and after those hours of the, the most extreme part of the suffering, becomes a moment of silence. A moment of stillness. A moment of clarity. A moment of discovery and solutions. Do you know that we literally created, pr pretty much created a, an entire new like, business model from scratch and also created different areas and different solutions in existing businesses within that 24 hours doing motherfucking push-ups doing push-ups there's such a a break it's, it's you break down to break through because all the other bullshit's gone all the bitchiness is gone once you make that decision to go through that portal once you break through that fucking portal there's fucking there's magic in that area Un Magic you can't find on your own. It can only find through that breakdown. Imagine that. I'm a grown-ass motherfucker. I do push-ups all the time. I'm walking around a house in circles by myself in the middle of the fucking night trying to muster up the focus and the strength and the discipline to bang out one fucking push-up. But in that time in between, by figuring out, how am I going to get this next push-up? All these other ideas and solutions and discoveries and moments of clarity start coming into me. And it's not, I know people talk about flow. This is not flow. When you get to a level of suffering, flow is when you like what you're doing and you're having fun and you're getting in the flow and you're just losing track of time and you're forgetting to eat. Suffering is not flow. I'll tell you that. Suffering is some new, uh, different, unexplainable level that's far beyond any flow or whatever the, whatever the fuck we talk about these days in the personal development world. It is far beyond flow. It's literally, I mean, I don't want it to sound like not too crazy. It's a connection to the fucking, to death. Think about it, death. That's what that, that's what that skull is for. Reminding yourself at every moment, you're going to die. You could die any moment. You might die in a minute from now. You don't know when your fucking ticket's going to get punched. That's what suffering is like. It brings you to that point. When you really push to that point of suffering, it pushes you to that, that, that different level beyond any flow where it's like a, a, a thought, thoughts and feeling in different elevated level. Like, all right, what direction am I going to go? Bitch or beast? Life or death? Your decision. Your fucking decision. Who are you? What are you made of? What are you really capable of? What's your real potential? And then you start realizing, I'm walking around, can't, un can't move my elbows, they're fucking locked, they're fucked up. Like, you know what, fuck that. I'm gonna get another push up, I'm gonna do another one. Final two hours, back to doing sets of five and eight and 10. Just by going to that deep, that dark place, that dark passenger, killing that inner bitch, 
and calling on that dark passenger like, all right, motherfucker, let's do this. And we're just talking about push-ups. This is just push-ups. There's nothing that serious. This ain't like a war story, of course. You can't even compare to the suffering that some people go in life. But if you're not going through extreme suffering in, in those areas, that's a different story. But you need to create this suffering for yourself so you can get to that level and have that silence. And still, like, this was a... These were, like, a moment of, of clarity and, and solutions and quietness and stiffness. Stillness. Stiffness, yeah. Fucking stiffness in the bones. But stillness with the time just stops. And some connection to the other world, almost. Like, cra- sounds fucking crazy. But that's what, when you put yourself to that level of suffering, that's what you can do. Go a- attach yourself. Napoleon Hill calls it to infinite intelligence. And your subconscious mind is the connection from your conscious mind, your being, and your actions. The subconscious mind is your connection to that infinite intelligence. And you can't tap into that on your own. You can't intentionally tap into that. So you want us to suffer more. Yes. Yes, you want to suffer more. Of course, we're talking in a controlled, safe environment or safe-ish environment we've already set up our next one it's gonna be 24 hours this is already less than a month away march 3rd and 4th the next challenge we have we have challenges now monthly challenges just suffer fast challenges for the rest of the year the next one's gonna be 24 hours of biking how many miles can we get in 24 hours so all right back so back to the push-ups i set a goal of 10,000. i didn't even get close to 10,000. i started off Probably too much thinking. I thought 10 push-ups a minute would be sustainable. And it was for about six hours. And it went to shit right from there. Went to shit. Went went to shit from there. And went down. It broke down quick. So I, I did the math. If I would have just been doing sets of five push-ups a minute. For 20 hours. And had four hours of break. Mixed in between. I would have gotten over six, six to seven thousand push-ups. And I didn't even get five. So if I would have broken it down, that's the wrong strategy. You learn. You let make lessons and you learn. So was this a failure? Was it a failure for me? I made a goal of 10,000 push-ups. That didn't even get to 50% of the goal. Was that a failure? So here's what you need to think about goals. Goals. Don't live... Of course, we want to set goals. You want to know what, what, what your goal is. But you really want to also set a, a process. Set a system and a process. And that's what the real victory is. Like, what does a win look like to you? Would a win be in 10,000? If I hit 10,000 push-ups but raised no money, would that have been a win? Or if I hit 10,000 push-ups by myself and not connecting with the family, would that have been a win? Or if I hit 10,000 push-ups and didn't get other people around the country to participate in this, do their own fundraisers? Like, uh, so, uh, There was a... Abe, one of the project graduates, did his own fundraiser in Idaho and raised over $4,000. At the same time, we did right along with us. He was suffering along with us. And he told me at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., whatever time, sometime early in the morning, a woman came in with her son. And Abe was in there by himself, maybe with one other person in the middle of the night. And a woman came with her son to watch him do his push-ups. She saw his updates on Facebook. And she brought her son in there. Just to watch him do push-ups. I guess they did a couple sets. I don't know the whole story about it. But she just wanted her son to see what it looked like in person. And to feel that energy of what it looks like in person for someone who sets you know, sets out to do something and doesn't quit and just keeps going for it. He had a goal of staying up the entire 24 hours doing as many push-ups as he can. And that's what he did. And they came in there and just watched him. Just so her son can feel it and see it and experience it. What it's like. And she said it was a life-changing thing for her son just to get feel that. It was more of a feeling than anything else. Fucking crazy stuff. So if I got 10,000 push-ups but wasn't able to influence that, was that a win? That wouldn't have been a fucking win. I'll take my 4,638 push-ups. Less than 50% of what the goal was that I set. And, and with raising over $4,000 in 24 hours. Just something I threw together of something fun for the family to do. End up raising $4,000. End up coming up with all kinds of solutions to different problems in different businesses. End up coming up with an entire business model from scratch and like mapped it out within that time. Like this is some powerful stuff. That's what a fucking win is. 
So you need to think about what does a win look like to you? I want to tell you about the Squire program. We have the Squire program. There's a certain event in the Squire program. It's a program for dads and sons who the sons were in that team range about to start, you know, entering manhood. So they're between 12 and 13 to 15 and 16, somewhere around there. And there's some competitions that the dads and sons do together. And you want to win. You want to win everything you do, especially with your dad. You want to win. Now, there's some competitions they do where the dad and sons are together and they're competing against the other dads and sons. And you look at one group. The dad is, you know, there's stuff with a sledgehammer, there's sandbags, there's stuff, manual labor you have to do in this race. Some of it's pretty hard, especially if the son's a, a younger 13 or 12 year old. It might be harder for him. Maneuver around that sledgehammer, get the work done. So you see some groups with the dad doing all the work, yelling at the son, come on, carrying everything. The son's just coming along for the ride. Then you see another group where the dad is letting the son do the majority of the work and talking him through it, coaching him, guiding him, teaching him how to use the sledgehammer properly so he doesn't hurt himself. Making sure that he's filling up the sandbag fully and not cutting it short as maybe other groups did. Making sure his son knows how to carry the bag while he's moving and that it's not too heavy. When it is, then they switch off. Checking in on the son if he's okay. Can he do it? Does he want to try it? Encouraging the son. There's no reason you can't do that. You could do this. I don't need to care for you. You got this. So that group came in last place. Last place. Dead last. Not even close. The group with the, the dad that filled up the bag himself, did all the sledgehammer work himself, and the son just washed by, twiddling his thumbs, they came in first place. By a long shot. They blew the rest of them away. But the other dad came in last place. They finished. That group that came in last place, to me, those are the fucking winners. They left that event with the most, with the most bonding, the most connecting, the most knowledge, the most skill building, the most trust in each other. They're closer together after losing the race. Because what does a win look like? The win look like teaching the son how to use a sledgehammer, how to maneuver his body, how to stay focused, how to complete the task, how to not always just ask for help. Facebook logged out. This thing logs out every time on a live video. That is annoying. I'm going to reset it up on Facebook and we are going to keep rolling. All right, so Facebook log us out, so we're just going to keep rolling with that now on, on a part two here on Facebook. It's freaking log us out. I don't know what's up with that. So anyway, back that, that to me is the winner. The team that lost that race, they won. They fucking won. Like, what does a win look like to you? The push-up challenge was a win to me. The amount of shit that was accomplished in that time, the amount of reading I did, the amount of online courses I did, the work I got done, planned out the whole week, the emails that I wrote. Or tons of emails, literally. In a minute, a minute's time, because the mid clock buzzer would go off every minute. Sitting there, send out a text message to a, a client, do a set of push-ups. Send out a text message to a, a prospect, do a push-up. Start writing an email, get the first sentence down, do a set of push-ups. Get three sentences down, do and you're and it's just laser beam fucking focused. Like you wouldn't believe, even though you know that bell's coming. It's fucking laser beam focused. Crazy. Crazy. The last two hours of the push-ups was more than the previous ten. That's how many, just from the breakdown to breakthrough. Once you get over that, I don't give a fuck factor. I don't care that my elbows hurt. Like, it's just pain. Sure, they're not moving, really. They won't move. There's no literally nothing left in the muscle, in the joint, but it's just fucking pain. Pain is a sign you're fucking alive, motherfucker. It's a sign you're alive. Fucking live. It's breakdown to breakthrough. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. That, the, the, the suffering makes you let your guard down. So you're more vulnerable. You're more open to the fucking universe sending you these signals so you're not like blowing shit off. That's what it's about. They say fatigue makes a coward of us all. But it also, when you're focused and disciplined and have the right type of vision and mindset, that suffering will lead to fatigue. It'll make you start getting fatigued. But you, they, they call it a second wind for a reason. It's fucking there. That second wind comes from the universe. I don't know how to explain all that shit. 
But that's where it comes from. It's when you find out who you really are. When you're down and out and injured and no one is watching and you're all fucking alone. You're forced to use guile and wits and brain and a different level of mind power. You're forced to take all the different faculties of your body and, and every part of your body and every muscle. That's why my fucking ankles, my calves, my glutes were all sore. You're forced to take every bit part of your body and focus it into one effort. One fucking push up or one thought. You're forced to think differently. To approach it differently, have a different perspective. It's beyond flow. Subconscious power cannot tap into that stuff on your own. You can't. That connection with the fucking universe. Oh, well, I'm not a tree-hugging fucking whatever hippie motherfucker, but there's something to that. When you go to that next level, you're connecting with something else out there. I don't know what the fuck it is. It's either death or something. Hell, I don't even know. The universe. It's the ultimate form of self-expression, ultimate form of vulnerability, but you know what it really is? Because it's breaking down all the bullshit barriers around you. It's the real fucking you. That's what it is. It's when you get a chance to stand up and stand out and go that extra fucking mile. That's what it is. It's all, and we say it all the time, just do hard shit in the project, in the project. We call it just project that shit, project that shit. That's what we say. That's what we do. Do stuff, do stuff so fucking ridiculous that people think you're lying. Every weekend, every Monday, the kids go back to school and they talk about their weekends to their teachers. They talk about their weekend to the teachers and the teachers just look at them like, okay, whatever. They just think their kid's lying when they start telling them the fucking weird shit that they did the, on the weekend. Like, yeah, sure you did, Tyson. I'm sure you did. I'm sure you rode 120 miles on your bike. Sure, Midge. I'm sure you hiked the hardest mountain in California and, and it took you 15 hours. I'm sure you did it, kid. Yeah, sure you did. Good job. Oh, I'm sure you stood up, stayed up all night and did fucking push-ups all weekend. Sure you did. They just think you're a liar. And let me tell you something about the teacher. I'm not going to say what teacher, what school, nothing, because whatever. I heard that a kid did 24 hours of push-ups. He went to school, told his teacher, and first his teacher said, Really? Did you really do that? Like, thinking he's lying. Then the teacher said, Do you even like doing that kind of stuff? Like, trying to convince him that it's he shouldn't do it, he shouldn't like it. And he said, of course I do. I love it. It's freaking awesome. She's like, oh, I would rather sit on the couch eating ice cream watching Netflix. That's what the teacher told this kid. I heard, I heard. That's what the teacher told this kid in school, in front of an entire class. So now this whole class is hearing their teacher, who's their role model, their teacher. That's one teaching them that you should rather... Watch motherfucking Netflix and shoving fucking ice cream in your pie hole because you really like doing push-ups? Do you really like that stuff? Like, what the fuck? What the flying fuck? Anyway, we're going to get off that topic before I have to end up homeschooling the kids because they're not allowed any school in fucking Orange County. Anyway, do, do stuff do stuff that's so fucking stupid that people think you're lying. See, people think you're lying, you don't even give a fuck. You don't have to prove it to no one. Fuck them. You proved it to yourself. You're already connected to the universe through your suffering. Make hard your new easy. Then go search for a new fucking hard and do that shit until that becomes easy. And just repeat and repeat and repeat. This is what we do on a regular basis. This is what the project graduates do on a regular basis. This is what the freak family do on a regular basis. This is why we started these monthly challenges. Wait till you see the shit that's coming up. Wait till you see the ridiculous shit that's coming up. I can't wait till that ice cream eating fucking teacher... Here's some of the shit that's coming up for the rest of this year. We have stuff planned out for every month. We have so much stuff planned out and it's so exciting. Like thinking about, fuck, I don't want to wait till October, November to do that challenge. We might have to do two of them in a single month. We might have to do two in a month. Who's in there? Michael Marsh. Program AS5. Yes, Michael Marsh is a savage that just graduated the project and gave a very generous donation to the push-up. 24-hour push-up challenge. Thank you again. We appreciate that. Awesome. Freaking helping out with the Big Brothers Big Sisters. So do stuff, again, on, a, on such a regular basis, making that, that hard stuff. Do that, that suffering, suffering becomes a superpower. It's fucking crazy. It takes you to some different level, some out-of-fucking-world experience. Will I die one day doing something stupid? I don't know. Maybe. Might. I'd rather die getting better than die sitting on a motherfucking couch eating Netflix, whatever the fuck it is, eating ice cream and watching Netflix. I'd rather die going on some crazy-ass hike and falling off a cliff. That's what I'd rather do. 
I don't want it to happen. I'd rather that than sitting on a fucking couch. Eating fucking ice cream. You suffering as a superpower. As a mother fucking superpower. Adversity. Hardship. Brutal. Relentless. Make that shit normal to you. Part of the game. That's what's going on in these push-ups. Shit was fucking brutal. This shit is still sore chest. And you know what we did the next day? You know what we did the next day? You know what we did? When we finished it? The whole freak family drove to the motherfucking gym to go lift some damn weights. Monday morning. Bright and early. Lifting some damn weights. We weren't light on the chest press. We are going smart. But lifting some damn weights. We didn't do any damn push-ups, I'll tell you that. I still haven't done any push-ups. I don't even know if I could do a push-up right now. Michael Marsh, yes. Thank you for the help. What's the morning ritual to get the first win of the day? Well, my morning ritual is very long and detailed, but I can tell you, I can tell you about it. We can break it down. We can even do a whole separate episode on that. I just see a question about the morning ritual. But the morning ritual, think of, don't, I can tell you what my morning ritual is, and you can hear 10 different experts or whatever, and high level uh, achievers, much more successful, and they'll all tell you their morning routines, and they'll all probably be something similar, some things different. What you need to do is find out what's going to work for you to give you, to make you be avail, avail, uh, the availability, the ability to attack the fucking day. That's what it is. What are you going to do to set yourself up for success for the day, for you personally? For me, I have a, uh, some things in the morning I'll do. It's, it's hydrating, eating. I'm taking care of my mind, my body, and then the business. Literally in that order. Literally in that order. And body just meaning fueling it, getting the blood flowing a little bit, not even doing a workout. I won't do my workout until after I got my main portion of work done for the day. That just works for me. Some people need to work out first in the morning to get their body moving so they can work better and think better. That works for them. And I have coaching clients, private one-on-one -on -one coaching clients, and I coach them differently depending on what works for them. So some of them I recommend one thing, some the other thing. We really need to break down your day, break down your sleep, your habits, your, your exercise, your routine, and literally structure the day. I'll tell you this, my day is specifically structured from the second I wake up to the second I go to sleep, like right now, it's 6.40 p.m. here in California. I've had this energy since the second my fucking feet hit the ground of the cave when I woke up. Because the day is structured specifically to maintain fucking energy. My discipline and my energy, that is the structure to get the win of the day. The discipline, the first win of the day, is getting the fuck up right away when the feet hit the floor and just telling myself, I am fucking awesome. That's what I'll do the first day. Then I'll tell myself, I'm going to attack this day with discipline, energy, confidence, action, and be my freak motherfucking self. That's what I tell myself. And I say, I'm going to create, I'm going to connect, and I'm going to close this fucking world today. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make no excuses, and I'm going to kill, kill, kill. Kill the day. I'm going to kill fear, kill doubt, fear, kill procrastination, kill the little bitch inside me. I'm going to kill this day. That's my first win, is getting that discipline, to get up with that mindset and ride that wave. And then the schedule is intentionally broken down throughout the day to make all that happened. So morning ritual is different for everyone. We can talk on the side and really break it down what would work best for you. All right, so let's keep rolling. Let's finish this up. And let me tell you, back back into that whole mindset of suffering and, and, and get reaching that different level. Listen, you, you're, the power of your mind is, is an irresistible force with no limitations, zero fucking limitations, except those that you... Put on yourself by yourself. That's it. Nothing else can stop that power of your mind. And that's the only reason I was doing these fucking push-ups. And I know it's something so stupid as push-ups. It's not some big hero story, but this is what we're talking about. So, because I get stupid comments all the time. So, fuck you. Anyway, so no one can do this stuff for you. It must be acquired by yourself. Some things you cannot delegate. You cannot delegate a, a positive mindset. You can't delegate your discipline. You can't delegate the energy that you're bringing into the world. Your thoughts, your judgments, your reactions, you fucking control. You wouldn't let another human or situation control you and dominate you physically. So why the fuck do you let people do it to you mentally and emotionally? Cut the fucking puppet strings. Take the power back. Take complete control of your mind back. It's, it's the only way to connect to the freaking, that universe, to get to that next level. Break through that. Fucking magical portal of suffering. Embrace it. Look for the suffering. Go mining for pain. Mining for suffering. 
like a gold miner. Except you're not looking for gold, you're looking for suffering. What's the next hard shit I can do? What's the next problem I can attack? There's no such thing as problems. All there are are situations that need a badass motherfucker like you to come in with a solution. That's all a problem is. That's all it is. But w with control of your own mind, you're connected to the to this universe. There goes Facebook again. Fucking Facebook. Session expired. Please log in again. Does anyone know why the fuck it does that? I already deleted the, the app, re-downloaded it, all that shit. And it just keeps logging out. Now this video's chopped into three. That sucks. It's going to re-get re get Facebook back on. That's annoying. Fucking Facebook. Mark Zanderberg. What the fuck's name is. But anyway, the, the control of your mind is the only thing that's going to connect you to the universe. And the only thing capable of anything... It, it's capable of getting anything that you want in the world. Within, like, the reality of the universe. You can't make yourself fly. But look, you can't make yourself fly with a device. But, listen. Go create these experiences. Go, go create some suffering. Go manufacture adversity. Go get out in fucking nature. Connect with other minds. And use the fucking power and, and, and find that different area, that different level in the universe you can get to. It's at your service as long as you're just not settling for being fucking average and mediocre and, and, and settling for your uh, pathetic existence. And listen, if all this shit sounds stupid to you and just all woo-woo and some philo philosophy bullshit... That's why you're stuck in the fucking rut that you're stuck in. Because you tell yourself this stuff is stupid. Stuff doesn't make any sense. Stuff's not possible. This is all just some philosophy bullshit. If you're the one that thinks that, that's why you're fucked up. That's why you're where you are. That's why you need this shit more. That's why you need this motherfucking project. That's what I'll tell you. And we'll just finish this off with, again, the magical threshold. The suffering is the portal. It's the portal you must go through. And it's the line in the sand. And it's your fucking decision. Bitch or beast. Which one's it gonna be? You fucking choose. You are fucking awesome. Choose the fucking beast. I will talk to you later. This is Steve Says, episode number 91. If you have any questions, comments, put them down below. If you would like some information about how to get involved with the project, just put a comment down below or just send me a private message. I will send you an application. We'll see if you're a good fit for the program. See if you have what it takes. You probably don't. Most men don't. All men need it, but most men really don't have what it takes. They're not ready for that next level. They are happy with mediocrity. Not me, motherfucker. Not all the graduates of the project. So let me know if you like that. If you need some additional help, more focus, attention, and a one-on-one -on -one basis, let me know. I can send you an application to the Operate to Dominate Peak Performance Accountability Coaching Program that I will guide you one-on-one, -on -one, literally on a daily basis in your mind, your body, and your business to help you with your discipline, your energy, your confidence, your action, and being your freak self. I will talk to you later. You are fucking awesome. No excuses. Instagrams. What's up? Anthony Tenna. Yes, Wes Watson is freaking awesome. I met him at a couple of events. We spoke together at a, a mastermind once. Awesome freaking dude. Awesome. And and yes, he's very much into Stoke philosophy. I assume he got into that in prison. Just looking at these Instagram comments now. Anthony, uh, the, this this Steve says is usually a weekly thing, but I'll pop on and do live all the time. But Steve says is a weekly episode. This is number 91. Thank you for following. Make sure you like and share and save the video and share it with all your friends, your family members, your coworkers, and your fucking enemies. Yes, Facebook is trying to make me suffer. Motherfuckers cut me out three times in the middle of the live. It happens all the time. And it kills the video then. You can't even download it or upload it in HD. And I got to download the shitty Facebook quality. Matthew White was on here. Another savage from the project. Graduate. I'm just going through the comments. Because once you're done with Facebook Live, you can't go back and look at the comments, which is freaking weird. Self-inflict more stress onto us so we can become harder. Yes. Hell yes. To become harder. Hell yes. And listen, it's not that things are, and to become harder and suffering, it's not that things are, are hard. 
is that people are just fucking soft. That's what it is. Push-ups ain't hard. People are soft. I got soft in the middle of it. Shit. I had to step it up and break through. So you want us to suffer more. Yes, sir. Ua Eckert. Just running through these comments. See what I can. All right, freaks. It looks like that's most of the comments. If you have any other comments or whatever, you want to connect or you need information on any of the coaching programs, one-on-one, -on -one, private coaching, just send me a private message. We'll get hop on the phone. See what program works the best for you. Either one-on-one -on -one private coaching or the project. Let's talk. I will talk to you later. You are fucking awesome. No excuses.